Welcome back to Shas and Bang's channel and today I have amazing company because this little guy here, he has a really important question. He was asking, how do you know when to stay in a relationship or when to leave or what are some of the signs to know that this relationship might not be the best one to settle into? And um, I thought it was a phenomenal question. So I said, dreams, we're going to do this video and we're going to sort this problem out for everyone. So everybody, you got to subscribe because I mean, like he needs your love. But getting into the topic, you know, this is Shaz and Bank. I am your life relationship and intimacy coach and you can always bank on me. And now that he's done, he's moving on. So I have a lot of people that tend to ask this question and they say, look, Shazman, I'm in a relationship and, you know, I want to be in something where I'm not just dating and I'm not this chronic dater anymore. And I think I'm, I'm ready to settle down, but I don't know if the person I'm with wants to settle down. And then a lot of the times, how do I even know if this relationship that I've been in for such a long time is something that's going to lead to something fruitful? Now, there are a couple of signs, obviously, to be able to look out for. But I think the place to start is what does the right relationship look like for you to be able to say, yes, I'm in a healthy relationship. This is something that's working and I feel really safe in it. And I don't have this pressure to feel like I have to get married, but I know it's going to head there because both of us are working towards commitment. Now, the first thing to recognize in any relationship you're in is we normally tend to fall for someone because of the chemistry that we share with them. Now, chemistry could be, you know, the physical appearance of somebody. It could be their intellect, how beautifully they speak, how articulate they are, how they invest, how they have dreams and goals and ambitions. And it's something that you find so attractive about them, their mind. It, it triggers you to feel like you want to grow and you love that about them. Or it could also be financial which I know a lot of people tend to settle in as opposed to being attracted to somebody that financially has goals and dreams. They want to be somewhere, even if they're not right now. Or there's the other aspect to financial, which is, you know, they're doing really well. And I love that they're settled, that they work really hard for what they have. And things like that tend to build a lot of chemistry. Now, chemistry is something that you can have with anybody. You could have chemistry in the relationship that you're in right now, but then you still get attracted to the bartender. You still get attracted to your coworker because chemistry is always going around. What makes a very different setting in a relationship is compatibility. And compatibility is when you look for somebody that spiritually aligns to your values, your principles, and your morals somebody who's spiritually so confident about who they are, somebody who, you know, has deep values in God and believes in, you know, my life is based around the rights and wrongs of God. My life is based around the rights and wrongs on how I believe we should treat people. My life's based on how I treat myself. And in how I treat myself, I know how I treat the next person I'm in a relationship with. The other side of compatibility, which a lot of people do not realize they should look for, is emotional connection. In the beginning, you're lustfully, chemically attracted to somebody. And so a lot of the times when you're getting into a relationship, you don't really think about how much I can speak to someone, how they address some of my fears, how we work together as a couple, how they think about different things in life. And I get to watch them use that emotional intelligence in different areas, not only in their lives, in my life, but in our life together as a whole. Now, when you look at chemistry and you look at compatibility, chemistry can last for a while, but compatibility is what carries you through even the slumps of a long-term relationship because they will be so many. And now when you're in a relationship and a lot of the times people turn around and tell me, I don't know if this relationship's gonna work because we've hit our first slump and it's not like it was in the beginning. In the beginning of the relationship, everything we did seemed to be so easy. Every problem we went through, we seemed to solve. 
But the thing is, a lot of the times you're not actually solving the problems when you're going through them in the beginning because you place these people on such beautiful high pedestals that anything that might be wrong about them, you make it right because you want this relationship to work so much. But when that wears off over time in a relationship and the real you starts to settle in, the real them starts to show, the comfort of their personality start to come through, people get scared and they start to think this is not what I signed up for. So when you start to go through the first slump, I say the first getting to really know this person for who they are, you'll only learn who somebody is in your first fight, in your first disagreement. You start to get to know, is this person that stonewalls? Is this a person that has to walk away? Is this somebody that you know will verbally be abusive the minute they get angry and they don't know how to calm down in their anger? And you get to learn who you are in a fight and a disagreement as well. Are you someone that just comes up all in their face and you need it sorted out? Are you somebody that runs into the bathroom and cries and hopes they're gonna chase you? That dynamic will teach you how the two of you can work that part of your relationship. Now, a lot of people start to think the minute that first dynamic hits, I'm out of here. The relationship cannot work because your expectation of how they should handle you in an argument is not met. But the thing is, they feel the same. They feel their expectation of how you went on or created an argument to begin with was not how they hoped that relationship would go through. So that's the first stage where people normally feel, I'm checking out, the three, four, six months was really great. I don't think I have the emotional capacity to go through arguing and fighting. And now you have the chronic data who would say, I'm done, I'm walking out, this is not for me. That's a first sign to be able to say, this is not somebody you normally go to chase because they don't know how to be able to take that energy for the next couple of years you're gonna to be together and use it as your fights develop, sometimes get worse before they get better. Because remember, when you fight, you, you, you move away from feeling safe. You move away from being vulnerable. You literally step into armor and say, here I am, you cannot hurt me. And while I'm hurting you, I'm gonna make sure that that attack doesn't come back to me. So the first sign is noticing if someone walks out and says this is not something I can do the minute things get a bit tough, that is a red flag. The other thing a lot of people tend to wonder and ask about should I stay in a relationship and how do I know if this is the right one? So you've had the first disagreement, you've understood that both of us have to learn how to work it. But it comes down to communication because both of you, nobody has sat to ta teach you this is when you have an argument, this is how to work it. When you have an argument, maybe a bit of space is healthy. When you have an argument, it's not about fighting the other person. It's about understanding why are we even having this argument? What is the need that's not being met in this moment? That in my selflessness to love this person, I will put my ego aside and just attend to the wound of this relationship. When you have a partner or when you as a partner pause to think about how you can do that for the person you're with, that is a beautiful sign that the two of you are ready to dance the rest of this relationship. And remember, a lot of times when you're dancing, you step on each other's toes. But as time goes on and you get into the rhythm even better, eventually you learn how to be able to move in union where you're not stubbing each other as much as you did in the beginning, but you still will. So the second sign is to notice this person is a keeper because no matter what it is we seem to be going through, we're able to delicately work through it together. We might not have all the answers. We might not have the coaching to be able to say, this is how we should handle this fight. However, we have the love for each other to say, this fight, our love transcends the argument right now and our value for each other is so much more. That relationship is a keeper. Another sign that you want to know if this relationship is worth it or not is the fact that you don't live on eggshells with this person. 
The person you're with doesn't make you feel scared. Every time you, you feel you need to have a deep conversation with them, every time you feel you need to correct some kind of behavior that didn't sit right with you, maybe you noticed the way they talked to your family at an event was a bit harsh, was a bit brash, and you've learned over time that if you approach them and you mention, hey, you know, honey, I just feel when mom was talking to you, you were on your phone, that was a bit rude, they come at you so strong they sort of make you feel that you can't ever talk to them. This is a no-go zone area. You don't correct me. You don't tell me who to be. I know who I am. And you slowly, they condition you to learn to live on eggshells because you can't communicate. They're not the partner that says, wow, I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. And you know your mom better than anyone. And that might have come across as rude. I'm going to make sure that I never, ever do that the next time I'm with your family. In fact, the next time we're at a family event, I'm taking flowers for your mom. So somehow I can make sure she also understands I might have been rude and I'm apologetic for that. That is a keeper as opposed to the eggshell behavior. Somebody that is willing to work with you because they understand you're not trying to control them or change them. You just know the betterment of how you two can come together in society, come together in family events. And it's all about noticing these beautiful things about each other that you can change. You're not on eggshells to do that. Another sign that this relationship might not be something that's working for you is you just start to feel every single time you wake up, you've lost your joy and you've lost your happiness. You don't wake up to this person feeling, I love them, I want to make this relationship work. You actually wake up feeling really depressed. They notice you're depressed, they notice you're down, but they don't care to correct it anymore. It's all about them you could bring up a little issue to them and they sort of feel okay you know what you brought up the issue and you're hurting but i don't have time for it i'm going out with the boys i've got work to do and they somehow make you feel like you don't understand their life and the stress they're going through or the financial difficulties they're going through so somehow you always feel there's no room for you in that relationship. You're always the person that's there for them. You're looking to make things work for them. You're, you are their ear. You're the chest they lie on. You, you're the back that the relationship you know, is carried on. But when it comes to you, you are so lonely and you feel so alone being in that relationship that you know if you talk about it, to other people if you tell a good friend this is how you feel you're probably gonna have that friend tell you you should walk out or you should leave because this seems like a typical one-sided relationship that is a major red flag it's not about waking up upset because the two of you had a disagreement but you're willing to still work on it that's very different to nothing gets solved nothing changes I hear things will get better but I never ever experience it and I always turn around and I say that love is a verb which means it needs to be shown it needs to be felt it is not something you just say to somebody you can't just tell someone I love you and that's enough to take you through the entire relationship so that's another major flag for you to notice another one would be I'm with this person but we have children together and they consistently cheat on me. And every time they cheat, they promise me it's gonna be the last time, or you're the person behind listening right now saying, it's the first time the person I'm with has cheated on me. And we've got this whole family, we've got society to think about, we've got religion and God, and everyone's telling me the right thing to do is just to stay in that relationship. Now, we will do an in-depth topic on affairs and cheating. But if you're the person suffering right now, confused on, do I stay in this relationship, do I not? You stay if the person is willing to fully make it up to you. I have coached numerous couples that have come from cheating and it has been so hard for them, but the person that did the cheating, the person that hurt the other person, the person that ripped up that trust, they're willing to go through all the lengths to be able to make sure 
this person doesn't question me, this person feels safe, that I correct everything I'm going through. A lot of people turn around and say, do I stay if someone cheats? And it is so hard for me because I have children and the general norm is, look, if they've just cheated once, you can work through it. There's a big difference with chronic cheaters and you're still choosing to stay. But here's what I want to tell you. If you're feeling uncertain right now, if you're in this relationship feeling, look, they've cheated, they're apologizing and they're saying that they're sorry. And can we work through it now? I will say yes and no. Yes, if it's happened once and it was a genuine mistake, it doesn't mean the whole marriage, the whole relationship or the whole union comes to an end. It can be salvageable unless this person is fully willing to rebuild the trust they have broken in you, which means dealing with all the insecurities you feel that arise when they're at work, when they don't pick up their phone. Because remember, when someone cheats, you start to join all the dots backwards. All the late nights, all the not picking up your phone, all the little lies start to make sense to you. And that builds a fear. Even when they apologize, it's still there. It's not worked through. The mistake that normally happens is someone gets caught after cheating. They realize they don't want to lose this relationship. So they say everything. They verbally bomb you with the right way to pull you back. They love bomb you with the right emotions. They reel you back financially to say, I'm so sorry, I'll do anything possible to keep you. But after two months, when you're feeling insecure, you're feeling low, you're dealing with what happened. You're not able to comprehend how you even got there as a couple. They turn around and now tell you that was the past. Move on. I'm not dealing with it again. That causes huge issues because you haven't healed. They don't have the time to have you heal. They feel the apology and the little love they gave you at that time is enough. Those kind of relationships don't usually last so long because someone closes up, they're in pain, they're not giving love. The person that apologized is expecting all this love and for the relationship to go back to what it was. It never ever will. It needs to go back to what is possible, which is new creation. And so a lot of people end up sitting in this relationship saying, they said sorry, they feel I'm the problem now. Am I the problem, Shazman? I can't seem to move on. Is something wrong with me? First of all, nothing's wrong with you because there's nothing worse than dealing with the heartache of someone that has broken it, someone that has cheated on you and made you question that whole union to begin with. So nothing's wrong with you, but to make that work, we'll do a YouTube in depth where the two of you will actually be able to watch it and it'll be like a therapy session, a coaching session for two of you and you can come through it. But do you stay? You stay if they're willing to commit Every time you feel low, every time you question, not taking advantage by feeling low, not taking advantage of throwing it in their face whenever there's a fight or a disagreement. This is maturely choosing that this has happened in our lives and we're gonna work through it as a grown-up couple. That is very different and it's possible it can, it can work. Another sign that a lot of people turn around and say, how do I know if this relationship's gonna work? Because we just don't communicate anymore. I seem to be the person that really wants this relationship to work. I'm always planning beautiful nights for us. I'm trying to have a sit and talk. I, you know, will involve friends to find a way to find out what's wrong with the other person, but they just, they've closed up. They won't open up to me at all, no matter what I'm doing. But I find that they're talking to other people on the phone. I find that they're following other kind of people that make me feel really insecure and I've brought this up to them, but they don't care to change it at all. That's another sign that this person has checked out and they're not worried about how you feel anymore. They don't pause to think about how does this make my partner feel? Are they okay with my behavior? That is really important. When you look at a relationship working in general, the first thing anybody should understand before they question if I should stay or leave is it's going to be hard at times. There are going to be times you will feel it cannot work. 
There are going to be times you feel I should have left ages ago. There are going to be times both of you are feeling we're ripping each other apart in ways that can we ever come back and heal from. A lot of the times nobody tells you that is going to be normal. It is kept so secretive because all you see is the perfection on Instagram. All you see is people talk about the ease of their relationship. Having done this for 10 years, I can promise you there are couples that look perfect on Instagram and they are going through hell behind the scenes. The thing that keeps them together though is they don't question how much the other person loves them. They don't question the intent of that person at all. So you never ever question the intent of the other person. When you go through really hard times in a relationship like that, I know it can feel like this is not the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. This person scares me in so many different ways, but it's the way both of you are fighting. It's, it's the love that's not met. It's the needs that are not met. It's the fear that's coming out. It's the fear of abandonment and rejection that shows up in those moments that will scare the two of you. And I, I have seen so many couples that go through that and they make it work. The reason they make it work is no matter how tough or ugly some of those fights get, as long as there's no physical abuse at all, as long as both of you are not verbally, toxically swearing at the other person, knowing this is something I'm saying that's gonna hurt them, even though it does happen a lot of times, both of you know that we want this relationship to work. And when this cycle is happening in our relationship, it's just we haven't solved that part of pain within the two of us individually. And these fights are causing both of us to raise our awareness, to be able to say, where do we need to be in our relationship? What could this fight teach us on how we can work so much better on communicating to each other? How can I hold my tongue back if I know I'm the person that verbally lashes out? How do I work on that? There's a huge difference when couples at the end of a fight like that come together to say, we shouldn't ever cross these boundaries again. And I know in the heat of anger, a lot can happen, but a mature couple makes sure that at some point you don't ever cross those boundaries again. So if you're going through that period right now where we're just fighting nonstop and we're not talking to each other right now and it's gotten so bad, I feel like I'm living alone in this relationship. Can it work? Can it not work? That's probably a sign it's not going to work and it's a sign it's only going to work if the other person comes back and says we need to be able to fix this so we never go through this cycle again. And when you go through the next cycle, it's not as bad as the first one because both of you are learning new habits to teach each other a different kind of a love language when you fight. So there's both sides to that, but in your gut, you know. I'm with somebody, in the beginning it was beautiful, it was probably driven by a lot of passion, a lot of lust and that immediate chemistry. But I wanna be with someone I can settle down with. I wanna be with someone that can see my flaws and love me through it. I wanna be with someone that who sees my flaws, gently tells me how I can work on it and change. And I'm not scared that they're doing it to manipulate me. They're doing it to be able to make me feel like I'm a better person in that relationship and you're doing that for them too. So there's so many different signs, but these are some of the really, really important ones to notice. How do we communicate? Are we communicating to change control and condemn the other person? Are we communicating to bring out the best in the other person? Are we fighting um, to hurt the other person or are we fighting because they're just unresolved needs that are not being met, but we're working on how we can get to a better place? Is trust a major problem in our relationship? Has it been breached? What is happening in this relationship to make sure we build the trust again to a point where the other person can say with their heart, I trust you, I love you, we've moved past whatever happened. So you've got to be able to communicate, you've got to be able to fight right, you've got to be able to trust the other person, and then you've got to be able to never question the intent. Because there'll be a lot of times when 
different things are going on in life and it'll make you question each other, but never the intent of the person you're with. Never question the goodness that they come with. Remember I told you, the minute you stop fighting in a relationship and you resign to this is who this person is, they'll never ever change. I'm going to change. I'm going to close up. I'm going to be tougher. I'm going to find interests outside this relationship to keep me going. And I'm only here for the kids. I'm only here for society. I'm only here for the fear of, you know, condemning God. I'm only here because where do I go financially? That's a problem because now you've resigned and you're no longer looking at working on that relationship. You're looking for an easy exit out and you're learning to build yourself as an individual on your own in a relationship that needs two people. And you say, the minute I feel strong enough, I'm going to leave. That is a huge sign that relationship is over. It is dead, especially if the other person doesn't care. That's who you're becoming especially when the other person doesn't come and say, hey, Sarah, I noticed you seem really closed. You're not coming to love me the way you used to. Hey, Mark, you know, I can see you've shut down. You're not talking to me the way you used to. You spend a lot more time outside. When you stop caring about who the other person is, how the other person is evolving to be, and how they're closing up in a relationship, that's a major sign that the two of you have moved into a different phase and maybe you need to choose you now. So I've given you a couple of beautiful signs that really come to me where a lot of people will say, do I stay, do I go? You've got enough of the little basic signs which are so important. They're the foundation of relationship. If those are not in your relationship, if you cannot trust someone, if you cannot communicate with them, if somebody is not willing to change for you at all, if somebody is not willing to be vulnerable, if someone will not adjust their lifestyle for you, if somebody financially spends and they do not think about how it makes you feel or the consequences to your relationship, if somebody is not dropping signs they want to spend the rest of their life with you and they're willing to work on it, if somebody does not show signs of responsibility when things go wrong that they're willing to be a grown-up and show up to those problems in, in your relationship, that's another sign. If somebody is not willing to introduce you to their friends and their family, that's another major sign they want to keep you a secret. If somebody makes major decisions in their lives and you find out about it from friends and family, that's another sign that you're not a part of their lives. If somebody is only with you consistently physically, and they don't pick your calls the minute you both are done being physical, they blue tick you consistently or gray tick you and never open up your messages unless they need to call you for that hookup. That's another major sign that relationship's not going anywhere. So I hope that you can use some of these. It will just ease your heart to know that we could be going through a hard time, but we can work on it as long as both of us are willing to work on it or I'm the only person willing to work on this relationship. It's going nowhere. I've learned enough from this relationship to spend some time on my own, to reflect on why this relationship didn't work and to be able to choose yourself. Use 2022 to be able to say, I'm not gonna stay in a relationship because I'm too scared to be alone. I'm not going to force a relationship to work because I want it to work, not we want it to work. And the minute you do that, you release all that energy where you're pulling, you're togging, you're beating a dead dog to be able to work. And you choose yourself to say, I'm going to reignite all of me again. And this energy will call for the right person to come into my life. Because if I choose me and I have such high self-worth, the next person walking into this space will recognize that and treat me in that level. So. Until next week, Thursday, I hope you loved this episode. I hope it gave you some clarity on what a right, right relationship looks like, what a relationship that's not going anywhere looks like. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, tell me some of the topics you'd love me to cover for you. Come use these sessions as a couple. If you're a man, use these sessions with pride to say, I get a bit of coaching every single Thursday. Use it to ignite a lot more passion into your relationship. And then subscribe. So every Thursday you get a notice to get your popcorn ready, 
to get your, your Coke or your tea or your coffee ready and you both sit and just enjoy the segment. And I will make sure we bring another cat to be able to introduce the next topic next Thursday. Bye.